Ashes of Creation is said to have a massive world, and while we won't see the true scope of that at the beginning of Alpha 2, we will see a more isolated map, having us focus testing on specific progression loops, moving the story of Vera forward along with your character. The level cap in Alpha 2 will be level 25 to start, and while there will be many wipes and server resets along the path to launch, you will still need to be able to progress to that point every time you make a new character, and the primary way of doing this seems to be the various types of quests Ashes of Creation has to offer. What I'm referring to as quests are actually broken down into four different categories. Commissions, story arcs, side quests, and events. These four types of questing will take you out into the world of Vera, help you progress with the story, and earn you new loot and XP for your character. Commissions are your basic quest. Gathered from a commission board within a node, these quests refresh every 30 minutes and will vary depending on world conditions such as weather, time of day, story arcs, and events. The goal, which is subject to change during Alpha 2 testing, is for a player to be able to have 20 active commissions at one time, and these don't include other types of quests that you can gather throughout the world. Commissions also have different types of rarities as well, depending on how developed a node is. The more developed the rarity, the commissions available to players with sufficient node reputation. With the increased rarities, you will also see increased rewards and XP granted for completing these commissions. While you could just grab every commission and run out and complete it as fast as you can, this isn't exactly their intended purpose. The way commissions are designed are meant to really pull you into focal points happening within the area. That could include areas that have an active story arc, side quests, or even world events that may be happening, and as the world changes, so will the commissions you have access to as they refresh. Some examples of these commissions include things like killing wolves and bears, visiting certain locations, hunting down named NPCs, hunting minotaurs, and all of the glorious kill questing and gathering you can expect in a traditional MMORPG. But again, the purpose of these are to get you out into the world. What starts as one small task can be chained together into a satisfying adventure as these commissions can lead you into the bigger side quests. Side quests are what you've come to expect in MMO. They're just kind of quest givers out in the middle of nowhere having you do certain tasks, such as the one we've seen with many the Minotaur that sends you into a place called the Titan Rain to deliver some medicine to his brother. The brother then asks you to murder some other Minotaur, which is actually in response to a world event that happens to be triggering in this location. If that event wasn't active, while well, this quest might not actually exist, nor would you have the commission that sent you over here to begin with. Pop up events in Ashes of Creation are small scale events that are triggered within areas of wilderness or points of interest that are meant to last roughly 20 to 30 minutes. They are activated based on player activities such as caravans, resource harvesting, node states, ongoing story arcs, and if you're near one, any player can join in. These events can have interruptions into the daily ongoings of Vera, such as blocking roadways, spawning bosses, or even changing up the seasons within those regions, which will need to be dealt with. If you fail an event, well, there are also negative consequences to this as well, such as node attacks or perhaps even a larger event that could eventually evolve into a story arc. The example of the Minotaurs, once you kill so many, it triggers this world event needed for the quests slaying Yuna the Storm Reaver, which is an elite boss fight. All of these events, commissions, and side quests not only grant you XP, but they grant XP to the node you are in as well, which in turn could level up your node and trigger a new story arc for you to take your adventure even further with, just like we saw at the end of the commission showcase in Trevor showed us as a new story arc is set off at Oakenbank Keep due to the node leveling up. Story arcs are described as a pre-packaged tabletop campaign. They contain all sorts of things that can change up an area of the world and give players something to do, including changing up various NPCs, quests, and monsters, and every single one of them is handcrafted. There are many ways of triggering story arcs. This could be from node leveling, like we just discussed with Oakenbank Keep. They could be triggered from various regional activity in the world, such as players killing X amount of monsters. They can even be triggered from cultural activity from the nine races. Each story arc has multiple chapters to it, which could have impacts server-wide on various environments, monsters, NPC quests, and pathways being unlocked or obstructed. 
Think of the random events on a much larger scale. The chapter will give you a certain amount of time to complete various objectives, all of which may not be clear to you in the beginning. You might not know what needs to be done until you step into a certain area or talk to a specific NPC. The completion of these objectives will influence how the next chapter plays out. The outcome of these story arcs isn't set in stone either. It's up to the players to influence these by taking on various quests and tasks that they provide, which could cause the arcs to branch into different stories with multiple possible endings, some of which can be failed and have permanent consequences. This is truly going to be what sets your server apart from another, because while there will be repeatable story arcs, there will be some that aren't, and if you go a different path on one server compared to another, then you could just change up the entire lore of your server and have a very different story down the road. But if you miss out on one of these story arcs, there will be a way for them to be replayed in a sense that doesn't change the outcome of the server again, but more so have the intentions of giving newer players the ability to experience these past events so they don't feel left out. Intrepid plans to balance the rewards through the multiple story arc branches to help prevent them from being a meta story arc progression that all players try to unlock in a server. You won't find the best in slot gear or XP from these story arcs, that comes from crafting the rating, but they are really meant to be the lore and to progress the story for each server forward. But these story arcs may be in your way from some of your other goals. It could be little things preventing you from getting done what you need to that push you towards these arcs, such as you need to progress through arcs to unlock various bosses, like with the Tower of Carfin. There could be something preventing your guild from running caravans efficiently because their normal paths are blocked, or there could even be a season change on that biome you are collecting resources in that requires an arc to be completed to bring everything back to normal so you can go back to collecting those season-specific resources. Regardless of how you choose to progress, Alpha 2 will have quite the variety of options even in the early stages of testing, so when you aren't focused on specific testing events, you can have fun with exploring the story of Vera and progressing your character.